Welcome to another simple engineering snippet. In this instructional video, we saw for the required pump head and electrical pumping power for a pump, transferring water from a lower elevation tank to a higher elevation. I hope you find it useful. This is our system. A single pump takes a suction from a lower tank and delivers water to a tank at a higher elevation. There are several minor losses that must be accounted for, including an entrance loss, an exit loss, and two 90 degree elbows. Here is the provided data, diameter, length the uh, fluid is water so we have the density and the dynamic viscosity entrance loss is 1.0 exit loss is 1.0 and each elbow has a minor loss coefficient of 0 0.49 uh, the throw rate of concern is 0 0.4 cubic feet per second and the roughness of the pipe is uh, 0 0.0005 feet efficiency of pump is 0.7 and the efficiency of the motor is 0.92. We've got some more things that we're going to need, and we're going to need the difference in elevation between the surfaces of the water and the two tanks, so we'll do that. And let's go ahead and select our datum. We'll use the uh, surface of the water in the lower tank as our datum, so that is Z is equal to zero. And we're going to be applying conservation of energy across this pump, so let's select alpha as the uh, surface of the water in the lower tank and bravo the surface of the water in the upper tank. So let's go ahead and apply conservation of energy from point alpha to point bravo. So here's our equation. This equation says the mechanical energy at alpha plus the head of the pump is equal to the mechanical energy at bravo plus the head loss from alpha to bravo. Let's simplify. We're at atmospheric pressure, so alpha is zero. Pressure at alpha is zero. It's a tank, large tank. Velocity at alpha is zero. We define our elevation to be zero. And... The pressure at Bravo is also atmospheric or zero. Again, it's a tank at Bravo, so it's also zero. And looks like we that's all we need, and we can simplify and solve this equation for the uh, head of the pump, which is going to be equal to the difference in elevation plus the head loss. So we need to calculate the, uh, the head loss. We'll be using Darcy Weisbeck equation, and here it is. And we've got quite a bit of here. We know the length. We know the diameter. Uh, we can calculate the velocity. The details are shown. And some of the minor losses, well, these are all provided for us. So they're equal to 2.98. So we need to find the friction factor. In general, the friction factor is a function of the Reynolds number and the relative roughness. We know the diameter, we know the roughness. We can calculate the uh, relative roughness, so that's good. And let's go ahead and calculate the Reynolds number. And details are shown. And so a relative number is 284,000, so this is turbulent flow. And we will use the Moody diagram to determine the friction factor. Here's our view of the, uh, the Moody diagram. On the ordinate axis, we have the friction factor, F, plotted. On the abscissa, we have the Reynolds number. It's a log-log plot. And to determine the friction factor, we find the relative roughness curve for our problem in this case, it's 0 0.003, and we followed along until we reached the Reynolds number uh, for our problem. And then we shoot over horizontally and uh, read off the friction factor. So let's do that. Again, our relative roughness is 0 0.003. It is one of the curves provided. If it had been 0 0.0035, then we would have to do some sort of interpolation, visual or better, uh, between, uh, between 0 0.003 and 0 0.004. So we follow the R relative roughness curve over until we reach our Reynolds number. I've drawn a red vertical line to show the approximate location of our Reynolds number. And then once we reach that, we follow it over horizontally, read off our friction factor, which I read off as being around 0 0.0267. Okay, so we have the friction factor. And now we can calculate the head loss. And it comes out to be 65.5 feet. So now that we know the head loss, we already knew the change in elevation, so it's a simple matter to pump, calculate the pump head. And it's 85.5 feet. However, we are uh, looking for the electrical pumping power, so 85.5 feet, that is the energy per weight that the pump is adding, but we actually want uh, power. So we've got some work to do. How do we do that? Well, let's again, let's review everything. Uh, head is energy per weight. 
And to obtain power, I can take energy per weight, multiply that by volume per time, which is just the volumetric flow rate, and multiply that by the weight density, which is mass times the acceleration of gravity per volume, per volume, and that's just rho g. So you go through and calculate all that out, you get energy per time, and this is our equation for hydraulic power. Hydraulic power is the energy per time that the pump is adding to the water. So this is a fairly straightforward calculation. It's included here. It's a little messy with the, you know, dealing with slugs and the uh, G sub C term, uh, but it works out to 2,136.4 foot-pounds force per second. Uh, when we deal with pumps, I like to think in uh, terms of uh, horsepower. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and calculate that in horsepower. It comes out to be 3.88 horsepower. Now that's the hydraulic power. That is the power that the pump is providing to the fluid. We want to find the electrical power that's being supplied to the motor that is driving the pump. So to do that, we're going to take make use of the efficiencies that are provided. The hydraulic efficiency and the pump efficiency, they are one and the same, and that's defined as the hydraulic power, which we know, divided by the brake horsepower. That's the mechanical power coming out of the shaft of the motor. And also the motor power, that's the brake horsepower divided by the electrical power, which is what we're looking for. Luckily, these two efficiencies are known, and so I can solve for those. It shows the algebra details, and we're actually going to be using one over the efficiencies, and it comes out to be 6.02 horsepower. So that is the final answer that we are looking for, 6.02 horsepower. Horsepower is good, but when we talk electrical power, I would probably thinking in terms of kilowatts, so let's go ahead and convert that to uh, kilowatts, which is more common, and so really I'm going to say the final answer is 4.5 kilowatts. Okay, that wraps up this example. I hope you found uh, it useful, uh, and I hope you uh, like and subscribe, and more importantly, have a great day.